This is the ATEM 2ME Constellation HD switcher from Blackmagic Design. It's their middle model of their latest SDI based HD switchers. In this video, we'll take a deep look into its features, its inputs, outputs, the MEs, super source, and loads more. Also, while I will talk mostly about the 2ME here in this video, there'll be plenty of chat about the 1ME and the 4ME versions as well. Inputs and outputs. Let's take a look around the device. So at the back, we have all the inputs and the outputs. Here on this model, I have 20 inputs, all 3G SDI, and there's standard converters on each input. This will let me connect 20 cameras here in the studio, but more likely a mixture of cameras, computers, other sorts of inputs, playback, and things like that. This amount of inputs and outputs, which we'll get to in a second, really positions this switcher as a nice step up from the ATEM Mini Extreme line. There are a few things to consider there, of course, it's not the easiest upgrade path, but it will do well for years to come and will grow nicely with you as your productions grow. It is strange not to see one HDMI connection here, not even a HDMI multi-view or HDMI program output, so they have dedicated the whole thing to SDI. All 12 of these SDI outputs here are routable, which means I can send any video feed from the ATEM through that output. For example, here in my studio, I'll take four of these outputs, switch them to HDMI, and connect those to four inputs on an ATEM Mini Pro ISO. This means I have a really nice four channel ISO recorder and I can send any camera or computer feed I want to that ATEM Mini Pro ISO. Do keep in mind these outputs will be program audio from the ATEM, meaning that you can't send camera one's audio to output number one. If you want to go down this route of sending certain camera feeds and their audio to certain outputs, then you will want to look into something like a Blackmagic Video Hub or similar device. Audio. Speaking of audio, we have two tele inputs on the back and this 5-pin XLR for talkback and program audio on the front. There's not a lot here in terms of audio ins and outs on this model, the assumption being that you'll bring your audio in via SDI or in via a mixer and into those two tele inputs. And I'll probably opt for that here in my studio where I'll take an output from my Flow 8 here and send that into the ATEM. For outputting audio from the ATEM, you'll see there's no real standard headphone output here on the front. You only have this 5-pin XLR connection. In general, you'll want to get a 5-pin talkback headset here so you can listen to the program feed, or you can use a 5-pin connector to headphone. You just have to make that yourself. That said, the simplest option might be to monitor the audio on one of your SDI outputs. Since you have so many outputs here, there's a good chance one of them will go to a monitor or a similar device that has a headphone output on it as well. So you can plug your headphones into that monitor and listen to the program audio. Stingers. The 2ME model that I have here allows me to run two stinger transitions, one on each ME. You can do this by loading an image sequence into the ATEM media pool. And I'll use this one I downloaded from H2R Stingers. You'll find a link to that in the description below. Then over on the transitions palette, I'll set things up. In here, I can set the type to Stinger, choose Media Player 1, and I'll adjust a few settings to make things look just right. When it's all set up, I can choose the Stinger transition, run it, and it looks great. I've made a video in the past about how to achieve this on the ATEM Mini models, but in here, it feels a bit more legit because it's actually a feature that's built in. Control. You can control most of the basic functionality from the front panel of the ATEM. This makes for a perfect way to set up your show and to do some emergency switching. In general though, it's not so easy to use these buttons during a show since it's probably rack mounted and you might not be sitting beside it. Most people opt for some sort of control surface at that point, and this can be any form. I've made a video about this in the past, but you can use companion, you can use Scarhoy devices, you can use OSC, you can use MIDI controllers, you can use the advanced panels from Blackmagic and so on. Even the website itself states front phasia emergency switching as a feature, so they probably don't expect you to use these buttons in production. I'd also say here that the menu system on the front is not something I want to scroll through in a panic, something you want to take your time and look through and know where things are. The ATEM software control remains to be the best way to get access to all the features of the ATEM at this point. I'd love to use the advanced panel from Blackmagic, but I can't quite seem to justify that expense for the studio here, but it's something I'm still thinking about. 1ME, 2ME, and 4ME. I've got a video lined up for the channel here all about how to use multiple MEs in your production. But if you're new to this term, it's kind of like having multiple switchers built into the same box. On my first ME, typically the main one for the show, I can cut my cameras and live stream that to the internet. Then on the second ME, I can do a submix and I have access to all of those same sources. So I could do something a little bit more complex like sending that signal off to a projector or a confidence monitor somewhere in the room. Additionally, I have access to the program feed of the second ME within the first ME. 
So in this quick super source example here, I have my main camera on the left hand side and then on the right hand side, I have the program feed coming from my second ME. In the ME2 section, I can cut between my cameras and it changes what's in that super source box. And even better, I can perform transitions here or add graphics with the upstream keyers that are built into that second ME. And be sure to subscribe for a deeper dive into this fun stuff. Multiviews. So with all of these inputs on the switcher, we need some multi-view outputs to see those sources. The 2ME has two dedicated multi-view SDI outputs on the back. These can both be configured with four box layouts and then subdivided into 16 box layouts. Interestingly, you can't patch your multi-view output to the other SDI outputs on the ATEM. That's something we've grown used to in the ATEM Mini lineup. The quick fix for this is to loop your multi-views back into the ATEM and then use the SDI outputs to see those. While this does end up costing you two of your inputs and two of your outputs, it is very useful whenever you wanna push that multi-view around your space, around your room, or around your building. USB webcam output. All of the Constellation HD switchers work very well with video conferencing applications. The USB connection on the back can hook right up to your computer and be used in, for example, Zoom as your camera feed. Now I have up to 20 camera angles that I can cut between within my Zoom call, add my graphics, use SuperSource, and create a full show. Keep in mind though that this USB is for webcam only and it's not for recording to SSDs, unfortunately. Clean feed outputs. The clean feed one option on this 2ME switcher gives me the program feed of my production, minus any downstream keys I have added. Like in this example here, I have some graphics on my downstream key one and a logo on my downstream key two. Well, the clean feed doesn't show either of those things. With multiple clean feeds, things get a little bit more interesting. I can use my clean feed one for a completely clean recording of my show. However, I can use my clean feed two to record the program feed plus the first downstream keyer. You can see here on the clean feed two recording that my logo bug has gone, but the graphics are still showing. This can be helpful to record some of your graphics, but not all of them. Keep in mind that the 4ME version of the switcher has more downstream keyers and therefore more clean feeds. Each clean feed has one more downstream key added back in. No built-in recording or streaming. As mentioned already, this line of ATEMs has no recording or streaming functionality built into the device as default. This might seem like a bit of a step backward if you're upgrading from the ATEM mini line. However, it does leave you wide open to choose whatever streaming device and recording device that you want to use. For example, here in the studio, I have a Pearl Nano from Epifan, which is a great little box for pushing feeds into the cloud and to streaming destinations. Alternatively, I also have the Blackmagic Web Presenter, which is much like the built-in streaming options on the ATEM Mini, but it does have this nice monitor output for taking a look at streaming status. You'll wanna keep in mind though that these things can get expensive, so you'll want to include that in your overall cost of the purchase. Adding a web presenter here and the cheapest SDI HyperDAC would set me back about $1,000. So that's an additional cost on top of the 2ME switcher. Counter output. I will dig into the counter output again on a future video. I know I keep saying that, but loads of content coming about this switcher. However, this is a pretty interesting feature and it's added to the entire Constellation HD lineup. And that's the ability to add a counter to the output one. This can be used for a stage timer for a conference or shown to your guests during a remote production. I've just set up a 10 minute timer here, hit go, and you can see it count down, and I can place it wherever I want on the screen. It's still an ATEM. What I continue to love about Blackmagic switchers is that while you upgrade, you may need to invest in converters or other tools for recording and streaming, but you still know how the ATEM works under the hood since it's the same thing, just a little bit bigger. For this reason, you can launch pretty fast into using a newer ATEM or an upgraded ATEM, use all the knowledge you had before, and then just learn the new tools that are added to this model. And this includes things like camera control, macros, all the nice audio effects, and all that great stuff that's built into the ATEMs. SuperSource. If you're not familiar with SuperSource, it's a way of showing multiple inputs at the same time on the screen, perfect for panel discussions or a show and tell with a camera and a computer screen. The 1ME model doesn't have any super source built in, which was an interesting choice. The 2ME model has one super source and the 4ME model has two super sources. This means that depending on how many super sources you want, you might want to choose the model that best suits you. We've covered super sources here on the channel before, so I'll link a video to that in the description below. A couple of things that would have really been nice to see in this switcher would have been an Ultra HD multi-view output, so you can see all of your sources in a much higher quality. I would have happily used those two dedicated SDI outputs in Ultra HD mode just to see my camera feeds in the best quality on my 4K monitors. 
Interesting not to see any borders in the super source. It's a bit of a shame not to see them there. In fact, it's a shame not to see super source in the 1ME model as well. And finally, many of us were surprised not to see the 4K or Ultra HD version of these Constellation switchers. Possibly something coming in the near or distant future from Blackmagic. I wouldn't be surprised if we see them coming out soon enough. And that just brings us to price. Now it will really depend on your use case and your needs if this is something that you want to spend money on or not. If you're happy with an 8M Mini, 8M Mini Extreme, or maybe you want to go all the way up to the 8K Constellation. That's really up to you. The main thing to consider about price here is the added pieces of the puzzle to create a full production workflow. Lucky for me, I already had streaming devices and recorders here in the studio from past gigs, from past gear I've bought, but maybe that's not something you have at all and you need to get all this stuff right now. And also keep in mind, if you're coming from a HDMI workflow, you'll need quite a few converters to move all of that into this SDI world and SDI cables as well. That said, many professionals out there much prefer SDI for obvious reasons. I've always recommended switching to SDI where possible, especially for longer cables or a custom build. It can make things a lot easier for you. So is this something you have purchased already and how are you using it? Or are you thinking about purchasing it and have more questions? Either way, let me know in the comments below. Happy to field those questions. Happy to see how you're using it. And I guess I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.